If you're going to watch only one video this season about finding and eating boiled crawfish in New Orleans, it should be this one because we are pretty much going to cover everything. Together, we're going to wander through the vibrant streets of New Orleans on a quest to uncover the premier restaurants and seafood emporiums serving up these delectable crustaceans. We're not just stopping at where to savor these delightful mug bugs. Get ready to explore five top tips that will transform your crawfish feast into an art farm. From how to properly eat a ball crawfish to the perfect portioning, answering that age-old question of how much to order. To the crucial signs that tell you when a crawfish should be left off your plate. We're covering it all and then some. So whether you're a seasoned mud bug aficionado or a curious newbie ready to dip your toes or fingers into these waters, you're in for a treat that goes beyond just taste. In our culinary adventure with crawfish, the journey doesn't end when the feast does. We'll guide you through ingenious ways to repurpose any leftovers into mouth-watering dishes that will have you looking forward to the next day. Discover the secrets to creating a rich crawfish stock, the foundations of any unforgettable gumbo. Learn the art of whipping up a delectable crawfish omelet, baking the classic crawfish pie, and concocting an irresistible crawfish dip. Plus, we'll let you in on how to seamlessly substitute crawfish for lobster in a traditional lobster roll, turning it into a tantalizing crawfish delight. Join us as we elevate leftovers to culinary masterpieces, ensuring that nothing goes to waste in your kitchen. So loosen your belt and get ready your palate, for we're about to set off on an unforgettable expedition through the gastronomic wonderland of borrowed crawfish in the Big Easy. So what are we waiting for? Let's go! Today, I invite you to embark on a gastronomic adventure to the heart of New Orleans, where we'll immerse ourselves in the world of boiled crawfish, a dish as quintessential to the city's culinary landscape as beignets or gumbo. Now, before we sample the exquisite offerings of the city's top seafood spots, let me share with you a story that encapsulates the essence of our exploration here today. Believe it or not, this beloved crustacean wasn't always a staple in the New Orleans diet. It was Al Scramuza, the revered crawfish king, who catalyzed a culinary revolution, elevating the crawfish from a simple working class meal to a celebrated component a New Orleans gastronomic identity. Scramuza's legacy began in 1951 with a daring investment in 10 sacks of crawfish, a move that set the stage for Seafood City, his groundbreaking venture. Through his charismatic television ads and public engagements, Scramuza didn't just promote his business, he became an emblematic figure of the city educating locals on the fine points of crawfish dining and leaving an indelible mark on the culinary culture of New Orleans. Although Seafood City closed its doors in 1994, Scaramusa's influence endures. His commercials and a nostalgic echo of a spirited era. As we proceed in our quest to discover the finest boiled crawfish New Orleans has to offer, we pay homage to Al Scaramusa the visionary who forever changed the city's dining scene. Our culinary journey begins here at the illustrious original French market restaurant and bar, a gem nestled in the heart of New Orleans. Birthed in the 1940s by visionary Sicilian immigrants, this legendary spot has grown from its humble beginnings to a cornerstone in the city's rich culinary tapestry. 
Here, under the stewardship of Jude and Anthony Morello, the restaurant continues to honor its heritage, dishing out sumptuous Creole seafood creations within walls that resonate with history. Here, the commitment to tradition is palpable, with every dish meticulously prepared from scratch, eschewing the convenience of canned sauces and frozen fare. The restaurant prides itself on its dedication to fresh, locally sourced Louisiana Gulf seafood, promising diners the freshest shrimp, crawfish, and oysters available. Situated with a view of the bustling French market, a visit to this storied establishment offers more than just a meal. It's an immersive dive into the authentic flavors and vibrant culture of the Big Easy. Embarking on a culinary adventure often starts with the anticipation of the first bite. And my experience with a pound of crawfish priced at $20 was no exception. From the moment I placed my order, the service was notably quick professional and exuded a friendly atmosphere that immediately set a welcoming tone for the entire dining experience. The true measure of this seafood delight, however, lay in the meticulous count and quality of the crawfish themselves. A total of 34 crawfish were nestled within that pound, each one a testament to the care and quality of selection. Remarkably, there wasn't a single disappointment in the bag. The size distribution was on point, with several of the crawfish boasting a good heft, making them satisfying to peel and enjoy. None were found to be too small or insignificant. The culinary craftsmanship shone through in the seasoning. The spice level was masterfully balanced, hitting that sweet spot where it lingers on your lips long after the meal is over, providing a warm, pleasant sensation without tipping into the realm of overpowering. This nuanced flavoring allowed the natural sweet taste of the crawfish to shine through, complementing rather than overshadowing by the spice. This meal was not just food, it was an experience, a dance of flavors, textures, and aroma that encapsulated the essence of good seafood. The thoughtful presentation and preparation underscored a dedication to quality and customer satisfaction, making this so much more than just a meal. It was a celebration of culinary excellence. With its perfect blend of quality service, impeccable taste, and spot-on seasoning, the original French market restaurant and bar set a high standard for what you should expect from a boiled crawfish experience. This wasn't just a meal, it was a vibrant journey through the heart of culinary craftsmanship, leaving me eagerly anticipating my next visit. Diving into a pound of crawfish can seem like a delightful indulgence, yet it may serve more as a tantalizing teaser than a full meal. This sumptuous seafood option is perfect for a light lunch or a sophisticated appetizer, setting the stage for a broader culinary journey. For those with a heartier appetite, consider complimenting your crawfish with a robust poor boy, enveloping the delicate flavors of the sea with the rich, satisfying textures of this classic sandwich. Alternatively, pairing it with a fresh, vibrant salad can offer a balanced and refreshing meal, blending the succulents of seafood with the crispness of greens. Given the light nature of a single pound crawfish serving, those not inclined toward minimalistic meals might find themselves peckish as dinner approaches. Therefore, planning your meal with an additional course or two could be the key to sustaining satisfaction throughout the day. For crawfish stock, you can use the head, the tail, the pinchers, at all. You can even use the strained remains for compost so that nothing goes to waste. This is what you will need. 16 cups crawfish shells, 20 cups water, one yellow onion quartered, two celery stalks sliced into thirds, a head of garlic with the top removed, two bay leaves, a lemon halved. This is how you do it. Step one, rinse crawfish shells under cold water. 
When making a stock from the shells of crawfish using a boil, it's important to rinse them first. The reason for this is straightforward. The seasoning from the boil, although delicious, can be overwhelming and mask the subtle natural flavors of the crawfish itself. By rinsing the shells, you ensure that your stock will sing with the genuine taste of crawfish. Accented only by a hint of residual salt from the original boil. This nuanced approach means that adding more salt to your stock isn't necessary as you can always fine tune the seasoning in whatever final dish you choose to grace with your homemade crawfish stock. This method honors the ingredient's true character and elevates your culinary creations with a balanced and authentic flavor profile. Step number two, pour five quarts of water and crawfish shells into a stock pot. Step number three, turn the heat up high, combine the rest of the ingredients into the pot and bring to a boil. Step number four, reduce the heat and simmer for 30 minutes. Step number five, strain through a large colander first, then through a fine mesh strainer. Use stock immediately, chill for later, or freeze. Crawfish stock freezes quite well. If you don't plan on using the stock in a few days, freeze any leftovers for up to six months. Before diving into the details of my experience at Bobby Seafood, it's important that I lay a disclaimer on the table. My visit was a whirlwind, with my time inside the establishment fleeting, limiting my ability to create extensive footage of the ambiance and offerings. Despite this, it was immediate apparent that the staff at Bobby Seafood are not just employees, they're super good people, inviting warmth and efficiency that makes you feel welcome from the moment you step through that door. The service is remarkably speedy, designed to get you from order to enjoyment as quickly as possible without sacrificing the quality or the personal touch that makes Bobby stand out. This brief encounter was enough to understand the essence of Bobby Seafood, a place where the pace is fast, but the experience is memorable thanks to the people who make it so. Okay, here we go. Located in the heart of Harahan, Bobby Seafood emerges as a cherished destination for those in pursuit of genuine Louisiana culinary delights. This seafood sanctuary offers both aficionados and casual diners a chance to indulge in the state's rich flavors through its market-style presentation of fresh and expertly boiled seafood, alongside classic poor boys filled with shrimp, oysters, catfish, and even roast beef. Bobby's is so much more than just a seafood market. It's a warm, family-operated treasure where the essence of Louisiana-style cooking is celebrated daily. The space is unpretentious yet inviting, prioritizing the quality of its offerings and the satisfaction of its customers over any elaborate decor. With its reasonable pricing and commitment to top-notch seafood, coupled with exceptionally welcoming service, Bobby Seafood stands as a must-visit spot for anyone craving an authentic taste of Louisiana, be it for a quick bite or a sumptuous Cajun feast. My recent visit to Bobby Seafood for their much acclaimed boiled crawfish turned out to be a gastronomic success story. I got a hefty five pound order from which I meticulously peeled 136 tails, encountering only one questionable contender. A testament to the quality and care put into each batch. The endeavor yielded an impressive 27.2 tails per pound, a figure that speaks volumes about the generous portions and the meatiness of the crawfish served at Bobby's. The fruits of my labor were twofold. First, I got two cups of succulent crawfish tails ready to be transformed into various delectable recipes. And I also got 16 cups of rich crawfish shells earmarked for a flavorful stock. This not only promised future culinary delights, but also showcased the value and sustainability inherent in my purchase, allowing me to maximize every ounce of my order. Bobby's Seafood delivered on the promise of well-cooked 
perfectly spicy crawfish. The seasoning was masterfully balanced, offering that sought after kick without overwhelming the palate or igniting a firestorm in my mouth. It's a spicy equilibrium that enhances rather than masks the natural sweet flavor of the crawfish. My experience at Bobby's Seafood was overwhelmingly positive, marked by high quality seafood and the kind of hearty flavorful meal that leaves you planning your next visit before the first has even concluded. For novices and aficionados alike, Bobby stands out as a destination where quality, quantity, and flavor converge in a memorable dining experience. I left satisfied, eager to return, and ready to recommend Bobby's to anyone in search of authentic, well-prepared, bald crawfish. Determining the right amount of crawfish for a satisfying meal is an art that varies with the size of your party and their collective appetite for this delectable crustacean. For those new to the flavor of crawfish, starting with a single pound as an appetizer is a wise move. The strategy offers a taste of the experience without committing to a large quantity, providing a safeguard in case the unique flavor doesn't match your palate. On average, however, a hearty boiled crawfish meal typically requires at least three pounds per person. This guideline is a solid starting point, but it's crucial to tailor your order to the appetites at your table. For the ferocious eaters among your guests, bumping up the portion to five pounds per person ensures that everyone leaves the table satisfied. Venturing into the heart of Cajun country, you'll find that locals can easily tuck into seven to 10 pounds of crawfish each, turning your gathering into a potential epic feast that could jokingly require a small loan to host. But beyond the numbers and the playful exaggerations lie the essence of enjoying crawfish. It's all about the joy of sharing good food and great company. Pairing your crawfish with a side of rich, flavorful gumbo or other Cajun specialties can elevate your meal from simply filling to totally memorable. Corn, new potatoes, mushrooms, and a variety of other delectable ingredients are often boiled alongside crawfish, soaking up the rich, spicy flavors infused during the cooking process. This method not only enhances the taste of the crawfish, but also turns the accompanying vegetables and mushrooms into an irresistible taste treat in their own right. To complement the feast, plenty of buttered French bread is served, helping to stretch out the meal and offering a delicious way to mop up any leftover spices and flavors. Interestingly, some people prefer to indulge in just the corn and potatoes, finding them easier to eat compared to the crawfish, which requires a bit more effort and determination to enjoy. This culinary tradition showcases the communal and diverse nature of eating crawfish boils, where there's something for everyone, whether you're in for the main attraction or the equally flavorful sidekicks. So, when you're planning your next feast of boiled crawfish, remember that the ultimate goal is to create an enjoyable and festive dining experience replete with fantastic food and the warmth of good company. Robert Evans once said that every party has a pooper. I'll add that every party has to have a great dip. In New Orleans, we know how to party and we know how to dip. This is a simple crawfish dip, but it will certainly do the trick. First things first, preheat that oven to 350 degrees. This is what you will need. Eight ounces cream cheese softened. 3 fourths cup good Parmesan cheese. 1 quarter cup high quality mayonnaise. 1 teaspoon dried mustard. 1 clove garlic, pressed. 2 green onions, white and green parts chopped. A quarter teaspoon shrimp boil. Quarter teaspoon Worcestershire sauce. Now whisk ingredients together until combined. Add eight ounces cooked crawfish tail meat. Season with a little salt and pepper. Then gently fold in the crawfish tail meat. Spread the crawfish mixture into a small baking dish or pie plate. Now bake it for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, take it out, 
spread a quarter cup of that good Parmesan cheese, put it back into the oven, and bake it for another 10 minutes. Let it cool for about five to 10 minutes, then serve hot, spread on crackers or crostini. JJ Seafood, located on Franklin Avenue in the West Bank community of Gretna, has been in business since 1991. Since its inception, JJ's has been steadfast in its dedication to a single, remarkable boiled crawfish recipe. A decision that has clearly paid off, given the dish's overwhelming popularity. This culinary gem has become so sought after that it's not uncommon for their supply to be completely snapped up within the first hour of business. JJ's has always prioritized the quality of its food over everything else. A philosophy that's evident in its straightforward, no-frills approach to dining. While you shouldn't expect luxurious seating or elaborate decor, you can certainly anticipate an experience that's both delightful and memorably savory. This unique focus ensures that every visit to JJ is about one thing and one thing only, enjoying some of the finest, most flavorful crawfish that you're likely to find anywhere. I paid $7.99 per pound for three pounds, and I can see why they have kept to their recipe for all these years. It's rock solid. Spicy, but not overwhelming in the least. Also not a bad crawfish in the batch. With no single heads, or too many loose pieces. You get exactly what you pay for at JJ's, which is tender, tasty crawfish. You have to check them out. Peeling and enjoying crawfish is an art form steeped in tradition and regional nuance that transforms it into a culinary adventure. Their journey to the succulent meat of the crawfish starts with a simple twist. Position one hand on the head and the other on the tail, focusing on the thickest part for an easy grip. A firm twist and pull separates the tail from the head, unveiling the prized meat within. Let's try this in slow motion. One hand on the head, one on the tail, and twist. All right, let's try this again. One hand on the head, one hand on the tail, twist, and pull. I think you got it. Then the age old dilemma surfaces to suck or not to suck. Enthusiasts swear by the practice of placing the detached head to the lips for a slow, deliberate suck, diving into a depth of flavor often overlooked. This act may raise eyebrows, conjuring up images consuming the crawfish brains. Yet, what's perceived as the brain is actually the hepopancreas, likened to the liver in humans, filtering toxins and enriching the crawfish with a unique taste. This organ, often referred to as crawfish butter, offers a flavor profile reminiscent of foie gras, but with an unmistakable earthy twist. Now, I have to be honest with you, I don't suck the head, although I do not judge anyone who does. For those less adventurous, or perhaps more focused on the tail meat, the process is equally rewarding. Start by gently squeezing the tip of the tail, loosening the segments, Removing a ring or two allows for an easy extraction of the meat by squeezing the base of the tail. This technique reveals the tender flesh ready for enjoyment. Okay, let's try this again. Squeeze, pull off a few of the rings, grab the end of the tail and pinch and pull. There you go. All right, once more, squeeze, pill, pinch. Now the debate doesn't end with the sucking of the head. The question of whether to remove the digestive tract, humorously referred to by some as the poop, is another point of contention. While some choose to overlook it, possibly influenced by a few beers or sheer gusto, others prefer to ensure a clean tail by removing the thin vein along the curved part of the tail. This step, though optional, caters to personal preference and perhaps a bit of culinary etiquette, depending on your company. In full disclosure, I don't eat the poop either. And again, this is a judgment-free zone. It's just a matter of personal taste. In essence, the experience of eating crawfish is more than just a meal. It's a ritual that invites personalization at every step. 
from the decision to embrace the full flavor profile offered by the head to the meticulous preparation of the tail. Whether you're a seasoned aficionado or a curious newcomer, the world of crawfish offers a rich tapestry of flavors and traditions waiting to be explored. Nothing is as easy to make than a crawfish omelet, or as Julia Childs would have called it, omeletto e crevices. This is what you will need. Two large eggs, beaten, one dozen peeled and cooked crawfish tails, a tablespoon butter, a quarter cup mild cheddar cheese shredded, and another quarter cup pepper jack cheese shredded, a splash of Avery Island's own Tabasco sauce, quarter teaspoon good Cajun seasoning, salt and pepper to taste, in a mixing bowl. Combine the eggs, then add a drop of hot sauce, a little salt and a little pepper, and scramble. Set that aside. In a small skillet, heat the butter until it has melted over medium heat. Add the eggs and cook until bottom layer is done, right around four minutes. Now on one side of the omelet, add your crawfish then your shredded cheese and finally sprinkle on your Cajun seasoning. When the egg is fully cooked and the cheese melts, fold the omelet over. And there you have it, a crawfish omelet. Located at the busy intersection of Magazine and Louisiana, Ball's Seafood House stands as a beacon of culinary innovation blending the rich traditions of Vietnamese-style boiled crawfish with the local zest of New Orleans. Since its inception on April 12, 2018, under the visionary guidance of Hey Don and the recent addition of a sister restaurant in Mid-City, this eatery has become a beloved community of. Here, the menu is an adventurous journey through flavors, offering seafood staples like crawfish, crab, shrimp, lobster, mussels, and clams seasoned with a unique fusion of Vietnamese, Cajun, garlic, or Caribbean spices tailored to each diner's preferred level of heat. Beyond the food, Boiled Seafood House embodies the dream of its founder to create a space where laughter fills the air and the joy of shared meals forges lasting bonds amongst families, friends, and co-workers. Boiled Seafood House truly lives up to its reputation, especially when it comes to their boiled crawfish. From the ease of placing an online order to the moment you savor the first bite, the experience is nothing short of delightful. The convenience of pre-ordering online and picking up the order the next day adds a seamless touch to the anticipation of indulging in a seafood feast. Upon receiving my order of three pounds of boiled crawfish, the first thing that caught my attention was the aromatic blend of butter, garlic, and cayenne pepper that seemed to envelop each piece. It's an intoxicating scent that promises a flavor-packed experience. And indeed, these crawfish did not disappoint. Despite their shells, the tails had absorbed the seasoning impeccably, embodying the essence of the spices in every bite. It was as if the flavors were meticulously crafted to penetrate deep into the flesh, ensuring that each mouthful was a burst of culinary delight. What sets Boiled Seafood House apart is their attention to the diner's preference for spice levels. The ability to adjust the heat meant that the crawfish were exquisitely flavored without tipping the scale to mouth-burning spiciness. This thoughtful consideration ensures that the focus remains on the rich tapestry of flavors rather than just the heat. My dining experience was flawless with not one single bad crawfish to mar the enjoyment. It was a testament to the quality and care Boiled Seafood House invests in their offerings. Their boiled crawfish are a marvelous feast striking the perfect balance between flavor and spice, texture and taste. Boiled Seafood House undeniably lives up to the hype and exceeds expectations. 
making it a must visit for anyone with a penchant for seafood, especially for those in pursuit of a remarkable meal. Their commitment to quality, flavor, and customer satisfaction shines through their culinary creations, making each visit a memorable one. I am eagerly looking forward to my next visit, ready to dive into another gastronomic journey with their exceptional ball of seafood. Determining the freshness of crawfish is essential for both taste and health. A straightforward method to gauge this is by examining the crawfish's appearance. A gray shell or meat, however, is a telltale sign of spoilage. Such a crawfish should be avoided. While the raw meat of a crawfish is grayish, it transforms into a vibrant red shell with clean white meat upon cooking. A common belief is that cooked crawfish with straight tails were likely to cease before boiling. However, this notion isn't a foolproof indicator of freshness, as crowded boiling conditions can sometimes prevent the tails from curling, meaning not all straight-tailed crawfish are unsuitable for consumption. Beyond visual cues, scent is a crucial indicator of freshness. When peeling, the shell should be firm, not soft. It should not give away easily. The flesh should be white and red, like the flesh of a lobster. The flesh should be firm to the touch. Remember, when in doubt, throw it out. The presence of ammonia or bleach-like odors is a clear indication of bacterial contamination, and such a crawfish should be discarded immediately to avoid the risk of food poisoning. It's paramount to heed these signs before consuming crawfish to ensure a delightful and safe culinary experience. What could be more authentic to our Bayou culture than crawfish pie? Here is how to make one. This is what you will need. For the crawfish filling, half a stick of butter, one stalk celery, chopped, tablespoon minced garlic, half an onion, chopped, half a bell pepper, chopped, a quarter pound peeled crawfish tail, half a tablespoon finely chopped fresh parsley, a quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper, a quarter teaspoon white pepper, a quarter teaspoon black pepper, a quarter teaspoon paprika, a quarter teaspoon garlic powder, a half a teaspoon oregano, one eight inch frozen pie shell defrosted. First things first, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Then melt the butter. Add your vegetables and cook for 30 minutes on low heat. Then add your peeled crawfish tails and cook that for 10 minutes. Add your spices and then cook that for five additional minutes. Put that to the side while you get your cheese sauce ready. This is what you're gonna need for your cheese sauce. Three tablespoons butter, a half tablespoon all-purpose flour, three-fourths of a cup half and half, one cup mild cheddar cheese. Melt your butter in a medium-sized pot and then add the flour, stir, and cook on medium heat for five minutes. Remember to stir well during the entire process. Then add the half and half and continue to cook until it starts to thicken. Add a little extra of the half and half if the sauce gets too thick. You want a very smooth consistency. Add the cheese, stir well, and remove from heat. Combine the crawfish and cheese mixture. Pour into pre-made pie shell and place it on a cookie sheet. I'm gonna do a little troubleshooting for y'all. So I think the recipe would have been much better if I would have blind baked that pie crust. I'll leave a link in the description on how to blind bake a pie crust, along with all the other recipes in this episode. Now bake for 20 to 25 minutes until the top is starting to brown slightly. Remove from the oven and allow to cool for about 10 minutes to allow the pie to firm up. Slice and serve with a fresh salad and some French bread. Located in Mid-City, Pargy Seafood Market is a vibrant purple beacon for seafood lovers. This unique spot combines a retail space with a cozy restaurant vibe, promising an exceptional dining experience. At the helm is Chef Marcus Jacobs, whose culinary expertise shines through a menu 
packed with seasonal wild caught offerings direct from Louisiana's fisheries. Expect a treasure hunt for parking, but it's a small price to pay for the reward that awaits. A diverse menu ranging from boiled crawfish and fresh fish to exquisite crudos, all celebrating the Gulf Coast rich seafood bounty. The option to select seafood from the counter case for a custom meal adds a personalized touch, perfectly complemented by a creative drink selection. Highlights include the boiled crawfish, sweet, perfectly spiced, and invitingly fresh. It's an embodiment of Southern cuisine's communal spirit and simplicity. Another standout is the Pompano Pool Boy, a testament to the fish's delicate flavor and nutritional value, making it a lunchtime must try. Porgy's not only impresses with its thoughtful sourcing and culinary craftsmanship, but also captures the essence of New Orleans dining with its great service and local vibe. An unmissable stop for any food enthusiast. Crawfish are not just a tantalizing treat for the palate, they're a treasure trove of health benefits waiting to be discovered. With their low fat and calorie content, they serve as an excellent protein choice for those keeping an eye on their waistline, while also packing a punch with essential vitamins and minerals like vitamin B12, iron, and zinc. Their nutritional profile is so impressive that some studies hint at their potential to ward off heart disease and cancer. However, indulging in this spicy delicacy comes with its own set of cautions. Remember to avoid touching your eyes after feasting on crawfish to prevent the spicy seasoning from causing discomfort. The aroma and spices can linger on your hands, but fear not. Many restaurants are thoughtful enough to provide wet wipes, much like the ones you'd receive after devouring a rack of ribs. For a more thorough cleanse, a good 30 second wash with soap and water will leave your hands scent free. And while your lips might tingle with a pleasant heat post meal, a simple mint or two can cool down the sensation, allowing you to savor the experience without the lingering burn. The Louisiana crawfish, a close cousin of the Maine lobster, shares a familial resemblance that extends beyond mere appearance to the very essence of flavor. Despite differences in size and habitat, the crawfish thrives in saltwater environments as opposed to the salty ocean home of the lobster. Many gourmets argue that the crawfish offers a superior taste experience. Praise for its sweeter flavor profile and naturally less salty quality the Louisiana crawfish presents a compelling alternative to its marine relative. This culinary kinship has inspired chefs and home cooks alike to adapt the classic lobster dishes to celebrate the unique qualities of crawfish, turning traditional recipes into fresh expressions of regional cuisine. Here's what you need. Two cups equals roughly about a pound of crawfish meat. You're going to need between 12 ounces to one pound tail meat. Set that aside for right now. Then you're going to need about two to three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Finally dice one half cup celery. Add that to the mayo and then finally mince one tablespoon of chai. Add that to the mayo and the celery. Then you're going to need a lemon. Cut that in half then juice one half of the lemon. Take the lemon juice and add that to the mayo. Add a pinch of sea salt, a little black pepper, then combine it until it is thoroughly mixed together. So at this point, you have your dressing for your crawfish meat. So then add your crawfish tails to your dressing and gently fold it in. Then at this point, cover it and put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour or 24 hours. Take two split top hot dog buns and generously fill with your crawfish mixture. Add a pickle, some zap potato chips, and there you have it, a crawfish roll. In today's installment of Gulf Coastal Connections, we've explored the lively streets of New Orleans, journeying from the energetic French market to the tranquil Mississippi riverbanks, 
on a culinary adventure that brought us to the very core of Louisiana's culinary essence. Our journey through the world of bald crawfish has been nothing short of a celebration of culture, history, and the art of good eating. Each bite of these succulent mud bugs has been a discovery, an exploration, if you will, of the flavors that can encapsulate the spirit of Louisiana, a testament to the culinary craftsmanship that thrives within this city's walls. Whether enjoyed in the traditional manner, with heads sucked and tails peeled, or through innovative dishes like the crawfish omelet or the sumptuous crawfish roll, this humble crustacean has proven itself to be a versatile and beloved star of the Gulf Coast culinary scene. Yet, as we wrap up this episode, it's clear that our adventures through New Orleans is about so much more than just indulging in delicious food. It's about celebrating the people, the stories, and the traditions that give these dishes their soul. So as we bid adieu to the Crescent City, for now, let's carry with us not just the taste of perfectly spiced crawfish, but also the warmth and hospitality that define New Orleans. Until our next culinary adventure, keep exploring, keep tasting, and keep sharing the joy of food that brings us all together. Here's to the next time we meet on the flavorful roads of Gulf Coastal Connections. Let's continue to savor each moment, one succulent crawfish at a time. Thank you for joining us on this adventure, and we'd be delighted if you decided to join our community. Consider becoming a part of our journey by subscribing giving us a thumbs up to share some love and spreading the joy with your friends. Until our trails meet again, take care, stay safe, and we will see you again on the next episode of Gulf Coastal Connections.